got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And, you know, I have a, an amazing guest today. Before I get to it, I'm going to just tell you, this is part of the Israel Business Leader Series. Um, you can check out past interviews. Uh, we had Moise Navone of Mobileye. Mobileye, if you don't haven't heard of them, they got acquired by Intel for $13.2 billion. Um, but you know what, Aaron, you know what I like is, Um, Moise talked about the sacrifices in the journey. You know, he talked about that he had to go through, go back to his wife and kids and tell them, I'm pulling you out of all extracurricular activities and there's no more eating out because the journey was not always on the upside. You know what I mean? And so I like talking about those types of, you know, pieces of the journey. Uh, John Medved and Yossi Vardy I talked to and I talked, asked them, what were their biggest miss as an investor? Okay. Yossi said uh, Waze and he talked about why he passed and John Medved talked about Salesforce. He was friends with Mark Benioff and why he passed on Salesforce early on. And uh, anyways, that and many more on InspiredInsider.com. And yeah, I know it's crazy. Good uh, this, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. I co-founded my business partner, John Corcoran, and we help B2B businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 partnerships and clients and help you run your podcast so, you know, for me, our own, it's the number one thing in my life is relationships. And I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationships. And I feel like a podcast is a best way to profile other thought leaders in the space and companies that I, you know, that I love and I'm proud of. So you can go to rise25.com. Uh, if you're thinking about or thought about doing a podcast, check it out. Um, and I'm excited today. A big shout out to Craig Weiss. I would not have known about the amazing things that Auto Lead Star and Aron Horowitz are doing without Craig Weiss of Retainer Club and In Your Face Podcast. And of course, Alana Shabte keeps everything moving. So thanks, Alana. Um, Aron Horowitz, founder and CEO of Auto Lead Star. If you don't know what Auto Lead Star is, you should, especially if you're in the car industry. They use cutting edge technology to help the automotive industry be more effective engaging buyers. So, I mean, what's the biggest question to any business? How do I get engaged quality customers on the web, especially in this day and age, and turn them into you know, engaged people and buyers, and they create a technology that answers that question. So that helps automate it. So it basically works for you around the clock. And, you know, I don't need to go on, but they fe- they're featured in, you know, different auto publications, Auto Dealer Today, Car Biz Today, and many more. Check out Auto Lead Star and their podcast inside, you know, they have, the, they have an amazing podcast, Inside Auto Podcast. Check it out. Aron, thanks for joining me all the way from Israel. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Jeremy. Happy to be here. You know, I want to get into what you do and, you know, how things are changing, especially, you know, there's a new world in in the whole world, but also in car dealership. So how are things, you know, you're on the cutting edge of this and you've been doing this for a long time. Um, You know, talk about what you do first and then we'll talk about how things are changing. Yeah. I mean, automotive is an amazing space because it goes back, it's, it's origins, it's history, it's lineage really go back to the uh, most one of the most core human needs, which is of course transportation, right? From time immemorial, we've been trying to figure out how do you go from point A to point B in a way that's more safe, faster, you know, comfortable. Right? That's this core need that humans have, along with warmth, with security, and 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 all that. And it's an amazing thing to see this industry, which is the sort of you know. 19th and 20th centuries answer to that transportation question. Um, prior to that, and, and automotive kind of picked the baton up from this uh, era, you had, you had horses, you had buggies, right? And you had, uh, you had bicycles, actually, uh, which, which luckily are still around with us uh, in, in many ways. Um, and we have some horses around too, nothing wrong with that. So, you know, that, that's the, I think, one of the coolest things about it. Um, when you have an industry that is that uh, uh, kind of um, uh, you know, history rich and anchored in the past, what you're going to find is that the business practices um, evolve with time. But in the case of automotive, because it's such a big industry and so unique in so many ways, right? You know, second largest purchase and there's this franchise system of, of dealers 
the marketing uh, side of that business and in many ways, even the purchase side, but, but a lot of the marketing side, it's evolved much more slowly than some of the companies you mentioned at the top of the podcast, like say the world that used Salesforce. Um, interestingly, I don't think I've ever met a dealer that uses Salesforce, uh, Jeremy, mm-hmm. believe it or not. I, I don't think I have. Um, they use software that has emerged in the auto industry, indigenous, uh, fits the needs of automotive. And then suddenly, as kind of the world has shifted, there's this need for them to suddenly, you know, use tools like AI and, and scaled marketing. So suddenly that's a, that's this new world that they're in and that tension, which is being driven by competitive pressures, by dealers desires to, to really succeed and to upgrade and to modernize that tension is exactly where we come in as a company. And what auto lead star does, um, is essentially, uh, inaugurate a new category of business uh, for this industry, which is a type of marketing that is founded on, uh, data integration, uh, founded on, uh, true scaled, fast, uh, specific types of, um, matchmaking between shoppers and cars that can be embedded into a dealer's, uh, business. And so if you think about it, like the dealer's they really understand their business. You know, if I walk into a car dealership, most dealers or salespeople at dealerships, they can just look at me and they can say, I know, I know exactly what this person wants. I know whether to go up to them now, give them five minutes, let them look at cars, let them not look at cars. Are they looking for this side of the, 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 the showroom or that side of the showroom? That intuition has unfortunately been um, essentially uh, removed from the picture when you, when you think about the digital showroom, which is where most people start their shopping journey now. And technologies like up until uh, us essentially, and, and may, of course some others as well, but th- they've really functioned more like kind of digital versions of billboards. And, you know, they put up a couple cars on the web and you know, they run a lot of campaigns and if people are interested, you get lucky. What we're doing now is we're bringing in a new way of marketing where we see everything. We see what customers are looking for. We see more customers. We see what vehicles are on the lot. We see what uh, the history of those different types of models and makes uh, might be. And then we're basically crunching all that data together and we're optimizing, we're generating and optimizing for the dealers uh, 24 seven ad campaigns and conversions on the website that are just so far beyond uh, what you could be doing with like a manual uh, agency or, or the types of uh, uh, companies they've been working with up until now. So, you know, that's what we uh, are doing. We, we talk about it as, you know, uh, uh, a dealer, a type of marketing that's founded on really seeing more. So it's like a high resolution versus a low resolution type of marketing. And it's predicated on being extremely uh, speedy, meaning everything has to happen fast, which means you need automation. It's predicated on being extremely scaled. We want to treat every car like it's the only car when we market it, even if it's a snow plow on the back of the lot, right? And then it's focused also being very specific. We can get down to the specific customer. So dealers are going to use us to run their marketing ad campaigns. They're going to use us to get higher conver- conversions on the website. Um, we work with hundreds of dealers in the United States, uh, rapidly growing, lots of the top names. Uh, we're uh, moving forward you know, really well with uh, uh, some of the car makers and just trying to basically give this new uh, tool set to a very important historic uh, sector. You know, Arun, I want to talk about, I know you can't mention names because you just came out with this, but... Well, we were talking right before we hit record about four times in leads. Can you talk about what you were doing with that? Yeah, I, I was just saying like th- those, when you really apply speed, scale, and specificity in a um, very uh, sort of you know, scientific way, but in a way that really takes the best of what dealers know about marketing and translate that into technology, you can just get incredible results. And those types of results are not incremental results. They're like step function results, meaning they're, they're a very big step forward. So we um, have, uh, we just finished a pilot with a dealer, you know, really significant dealer. And like we do in our pilots, we tend to set success criteria based on like what happened last year. And even though it's COVID, we just take the numbers from last year and, and, and say, we're going to, you know, we're going to compete. Um, you know, yeah, because you're, you're sort of at a disadvantage at COVID. Yeah, you're at a disadvantage. Advantage. We look at the yeah. weekends, we make sure we're not including accidentally Labor Day or whatever. Anyways, the point is we, um, we ran this pilot with the dealer. And I think like most dealers, 
you know, dealers are always open to try new things. They're extremely innovative entrepreneurial folks. Uh, they're not necessarily, they, they have a healthy dose of skepticism uh, from their experience. And I think, again, we walk into every uh, dealership saying, hey, we're going to do all this stuff, this fancy stuff. Uh, you know, we're going to bring automation. We're going to do things that you were paying a lot of money for to have done manually. We're, they're going to be automated. And at the end of the day, results speak. And right. truthfully, what, the only thing that speaks is sales. That's how dealers, dealers are and how they should be. Um, in this particular case, we had a, a target on leads, uh, quality leads, and we, we, we forex the target, uh, which was a really wonderful, uh, outcome. And I think the dealer, you know, maybe believes us a little more. We have to do that another month and another month. And another <laughs> um, it's but, one you know, of these done for day, me lately. It comes down to sales, right? right? You, you want to make sure that that that's going to translate into a sales lift for them, which is, which is also something that we're, um, you know, we're, we're we're very good at doing uh, like the, the challenge with leads, meaning lead, we don't think of leads. Like we don't, we don't, we do, meaning we have it in our name. And you know, when we were founded, we were thinking of ourselves as lead gen, but what we quickly realized over time was that it wasn't about, you know, leads. It was about, you know, helping people be leaders and be stars, right. in, in their business, because then the, the greatest dealers really are, are very much people, people, they want to create a great consumer experience and, the technology should uh, be an extension of what that dealer knows, thinks, wants. Um, and the way that we translate their insights and knowledge into marketing is very powerful, uh, brings good results, and is very authentically that dealer. So what did you do for them? Well, they used us in place of a traditional marketing agency, ran all their paid search, all their uh, uh, did, you know, digital uh, like social marketing, uh, social media marketing, and we drove a heck of a lot of uh, quality shoppers to their website and to their yeah. CRM so that they could go follow up and, and you know, make those closes. Yeah. I mean, like if a, de if a dealership is listening right now and they're like, this sounds amazing, uh, how does it work? How do you explain it to them typically? So what we generally do is say that you could think of us as a uh, kind of the next evolution of the marketing agency, which they're all used to working with. Right, so they have a marketing agency, they run their Google ads, they run their Google display ads, they run their, their Facebook marketing, their Instagram marketing, and our technology takes care of all of that. Hmm. And then we also embed some intelligence on the website that helps do personalized targeting. So you could think of us as kind of um, a next generation matchmaker between the cars they have on their lot and uh, their shoppers via uh, the mediums of Google and Facebook paid uh, marketing and the uh, website that they have. And that, that's what we do. Mm. Where did you get the idea for this? So it's interesting because the idea really emerged out of um, being passionate about small, medium businesses. Uh, my uh, co-founders and I, uh, Eli Avanishai, we were uh, in, in different ways. We were all involved in the world of SMBs. Um, and we were looking at the way marketing was evolving and seeing that, uh, you know, big players in the space who tend to usually put a lot of pressure on SMB businesses. They just have unbelievable tools for marketing and unbelievable tools for automation and access to um, kind of off the shelf stuff that is very powerful. And uh, SMBs don't have the bandwidth or capacity to operate that stuff. It's not, it's, it may be designed from them at the beginning for them at the beginning in order to get into the market very quickly. Those businesses tend to go up to enterprise. And we were uh, very curious whether we could build a marketing automation system that was uh, built for SMBs uh, and able to work in that type of environment, small, medium businesses, right? Uh, and we did, and we built some really cool stuff that used very advanced technology. Uh, you mentioned that we were in Israel. So in Israel, you have access to a lot of really good developers, uh, developer talent uh, and advanced technology, who are the folks who, my co-founders and others who work at the company. And we luckily through one of our advisors stumbled into automotive. Um, and when we got going there, you know, we, we built a succession of products and we realized that we just have a real advantage because of how we can operate with, um, you know, intelligence and data at scale. And what we were doing was actually taking kind of the same types of insights a dealer would have just looking at a person walking into a showroom. We were actually figuring out how to translate those, not for one campaign or for two campaigns or for a few cars and the rest of the cars just get like a, you know, catch all stuff for every single car uh, and for every single opportunity that a dealer has service and whatnot. Uh, and as we realized that, we realized that the technology really is breakthrough uh, in this industry. The results are breakthrough. Again, if you, if, you, if you can embrace that, as a dealer, you're suddenly playing in the future where the sort of non-automotive, um, 
marketing technology is actually at. Now, if you try to bring non-automotive MarTech into automotive, it would not work because there's so much specificity that you have to uh, account for. The minute you make that happy marriage of the same tech chops and approach to scaled marketing automation from the outside with the knowledge and insight into auto, then you suddenly have, uh, you know, you have something special. When we first came in, we did not know auto. You know, you know, I'll freely admit that five, six years ago, I did not understand a word anyone was saying to me. <laughs> but uh, we learned that. Well, the innovation, hard way. you know, innovation all we went from there. Yeah, innovation comes from outside industry typically, right? So right. sometimes it's inside, an advantage, I mean, right? Yeah, like I find innovation comes either from the internal periphery or from the uh, from the external. Often more from the internal periphery. I think. I think. I think if you have the inside. You know, if you know an industry and yet you're not like bought into the models that everyone always uses and you just try things differently, that's a great position to be in. When you come from the outside, you have a big hurdle. Um, we were willing to go through, frankly, just like the difficulties and the pain uh, to get through that hurdle. And now um, I, you know, I could talk cars with a lot of people. I, dealers say that I sound like I know at least basically what I'm talking about. <laughs> but we definitely know what we definitely know is the tech side and we really know how to work with the tools of the day. And bridging that gap is, is sort of our, you know, and, and, you know, when you think about it, like your typical dealer either has an in-house team or works with a marketing agency. Those folks then work with the markets. Right now, the major markets being Facebook, Google, you know, a few others. And over the past five years, like th that, that worked fine. But those markets, Facebook, Google, they've advanced at light speed, right? So over the past five years, they've added so much functionality, so much opportunity. That's stuff that's really only accessible. You, you can really only take full advantage of that if you're using technology to talk to it. And those agencies who are great agencies and any dealer looking for an agency has an amazing selection They're but they're not, they, they didn't say, Oh no, now, now we're a full tech company and we're going to go all in with that and keep that locked. So a gap opened up and frankly, the dealer now sits over here, only a little of their opportunities are being captured. I mean, cause there's a lot of people looking for that snowplow on the back of the lot. No one's going to spend the time to market that thing. Right. Unless you bring in, technology that can give you specificity, scale, and speed. And, uh, and that's where Auto Elite Star really came in to fill that gap, see more, understand more, bring that level of you know, resolution and detail to the dealer to drive more sales opportunities. Yeah. You know, Aaron, you know, with any company, it goes down to execution and team. You've built a, an amazing team um, at Auto Lead Star. And I want to talk about how you met your co-founders and, and built the team. So uh, we're three co-founders. One of uh, one of my partners uh, I met uh, in the in the army. I, we were in infantry together and slept in the same tent. <laughs> so that's how we got to know each other. Uh, he went on to be a uh, you know tech guru, uh, and uh, and so many years later we decided to do something together. Uh, ha you know, I'm I very uh, one of the one of the great things to happen is you're literally in the trenches with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we were literally in the trenches. Um, or usually marching around. And then the, um, and then the, and then Eliav, who's our, our other co-founder, uh, he was in a university with uh, my co-founder and, you know, just got to get to know him. He's, he's a real, um, he's a product guy. He, he happens to be, his background's in math, but he's a product guy. Uh, and, you know, we were able to really build a good connection and, and just wanted to be on a journey together. The, the only reason, you know, the, like companies work because of the people. And so it was a good founding core and we've added amazing people since. Um, and, uh, and, and I feel like, you know, it's this, it's, it's really a movement. We're all, we're all just really dedicated to trying to bring this new type of marketing uh, opportunity to one of the most important businesses in, in the world, certainly in the United States and, and other major uh, kind of, dem, you know, middle, middle-class uh, democracies where you have, um, you know, in the U S you have, I don't know, 1.5 million people directly employed at dealerships. You have uh, a pay payroll every year of 67 billion, $70 billion. Uh, you, that's just the franchise dealers. Uh, Indy, it's even, you know, you add more. Uh, you have uh, state taxes, sometimes being 20, 30% sales tax on, uh, on, on car sale. It's just, it's, it's an engine of the economy. People can still get jobs there, can still earn a, a respectable living. Uh, there, there aren't that many places like that uh, anymore. And it, we feel very privileged to be trying to give that, space and those businesses, the tools they need to be successful in the future. How did uh, your experience in the Israeli army shape you? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's just a, it's a place that's very, um, it's very much into uh, like solving problems and taking ownership. So I think that was a, 
you know, that's that there's, they put a lot of trust in people. They don't really care about age or, you know, or kind of where you're from. It's just more about like what you're able to do. Um, and I think that sort of meritocratic approach, uh, where we can, uh, check out from, you know, I don't even know the age of half the people who work at my company. And some of them I think are, have high, big titles, but are actually really pretty young, but it's just, there's nothing to do with, uh, with that. Uh, it's all about what you can do. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, dealing with challenges and perseverance. I actually saw this interesting article. Um, I think it was in Forbes or I was in an airport fortune. I don't know somewhere. Some, I saw it off the shelf that um, for a time, uh, I guess during the 2008 economic crash, like in the years afterwards, um, companies were actually trying to hire people from certain types of army backgrounds, um, officers and whatnot, mainly because they could navigate uncertainty and they were okay with that. And, you know, the fog of war, they, they'd been trained to deal with that and, and be okay with that level of uncertainty. And I think like right now with COVID, that's certainly come in handy, you know, just sort of this sense of confidence that, you know, you have certain competencies, you have a certain compass and you, you just navigate and react to what's coming your way. Uh, and that's not always easy. I mean, you know, you were talking about uh, uh, some of the other uh, folks that you were speaking with, what they were talking about, the, the journey and the challenges. There are many uh, and many mistakes. And, you know, in the end of the day, I think one of the key characteristics of an entrepreneur is just perseverance and commitment uh, and a sense of responsibility to the ultimate mission and outcome that you're going after, you know, while really trying to care about the people, um, you know, who you're, who you're working with. And, you know, even if it doesn't work out with someone, you also try to care and, and be, be respectful and, and whatnot. So it's like, those are the things that uh, you, I think you pick up in an experience like, like in the military and um, at least in my experience. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Before we uh, finish, I want to tell people uh, two last questions. Um, I want to point people towards autoleadstar.com. They could check out what you guys are doing, what you've built over there and inside auto podcast. Um, just quickly, what's been a, you know, I always ask as an inspired insider, what's been more of a low point, challenge point, and what's been a proud moment for you? Um, I mean, some of them are together, right? You know, those low point challenge, <laughs> those low point, how you respond and react to, to low point challenge point. Look, we've, we've been on, uh, you know, uh, a journey to build this thing and to really kind of see that vision come together. Um, and, as an entrepreneur, that's challenging in, in many ways. Uh, it's challenging on, on family. It's challenging on relationships. Um, and I think that, you know, rather than pointing to any one particular thing, you have, the, you have all those things. You have those, money where, those moments where there's not a lot of money in the bank. You have those moments where you're on the road, you know, for weeks on end uh, or, or even longer and you're not seeing your family and you feel this, you know, crushing sense of uh, like, you know, letting them down. I mean, th those are very real things for most entrepreneurs. I think most of us experience those things um, and, uh, and, and I've experienced them and, you know, I feel a lot of uh, empathy and, and sympathy to those that are. Um, I think that's, that's obviously very much present when it comes to like things I'm proud of. I'm just proud of the innovation that we've uh, brought to the table. Um, our team is all about solving problems, being creative, uh, doing things uh, well uh, and right we are also willing to tolerate a certain amount of, you know, failures. And I think that's also important for entrepreneurs, you know, and there's nothing that hurts more. I mean, it happens to all of us. It just doesn't work for some reason. Right. You know, we have this, this really nice person who put us on a dealership and like, you know, an independent dealership somewhere. And for whatever reason, it just wasn't working. There were things in their account and, how, and things with us. I'm sure it just didn't work. Those are, those feel really bad, but for me, it's all about how do we react to that? Like, and what's our ultimate guiding vision and how are we driving forward? And, you know, we have this vision where um, these, these businesses that are dealerships, these important businesses are all marketing like their top tier Fortune 500 players and, and rocking it. And, and, you know, we're driving towards that every single day. And that's what motivates me and, you know, what motivates uh, our company. What episodes should people check out of the podcast? Whoa, interesting. Um, anything that Ilana is hosting. Check out. <laughs> great. Um, aside from that, um, I don't know. There's so many good ones. I know we interviewed Derek West of uh, uh, the Autobahn Group, and you know Derek's like really been in the. He's lived the whole digital evolution of automotive. Um, we interviewed um, on a totally different side. We interviewed Chase Fraser from uh, Fraser uh, McCombs uh, Capital, a uh, venture investor in automotive, and he talked a lot about entrepreneurship and what he looks for in companies, where things are going. Um, uh, Dale Early, who runs a, a, an amazing dealership down in uh, Texas, we've we've just had a great 
Der, uh, Derek uh, DeBoer from, uh, from uh, out in uh, Oregon um, and his, uh, his amazing story with, with his spouse, uh, Brooke, um, around uh, dealerships racing. Uh, it just goes on and on. There's great content you know, in there. Thank yeah. you. First of all, Aron, I know there's so much more to go to, but you have more dealerships to help. So I'll let you do that. Everyone check out autoleadstar.com. Check out insideautopodcast.com. And uh, thanks for being with me. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Great to be here. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.